Hi everybody, my name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be talking about improving LLM-based agents with efficient memory for collaborative human agent team. This is work done with these amazing colleagues. So first, let's talk about multi-agent collaboration. Effectively, multi-agent collaboration is the idea of multiple agents working together to solve a task. And often, effective team collaboration re relies on adaptive interplay of reasoning, actions, and behaviors that are really, really important. And so this rapid advancement recently in AI has actually enabled us to have intelligent agents as partners, especially in human agent collaboration teams. So our goal for this work is to try to address the challenges that have been found in multi-agent collaboration and try to utilize new AI systems in this system. So first, let's talk about communication, which is a very important aspect of collaboration. Usually, communication in multi-agent RL frameworks are done in latent vectors, which are uninterpretable by humans. They're communicating in some language that the humans don't understand. But to facilitate communication with humans to allow human agent teamwork, we actually want our agents to communicate using natural language. So let's try to use language models directly as agents. So we use this testbed called Overcooked, or in fact, the Steakhouse version of Overcooked, where we add a few new uh, items to the game where there's two agents running around and trying to cook together and make a meal. And you can see there's a variety of different things on the, on the different countertops. And their goals are to deliver the four dishes above, which is a steak dish, a chicken dish, a steak and onion dish, and a chicken and onion dish. And the way that you can do this is that there is two different, there is the grill here, and then there is a pot here, and you cook the chicken on, in the pot, and you cook the meat on the grill, and you have to wash the dishes here in the dishwashing uh, place the same. And so the goal is to deliver as many dishes as possible in the time given. So how do we actually get a language model to play a game? Well, we propose using a hierarchical neurosymbolic agent, which is the idea of taking a state, converting it into an observation, which is in pixel space, and then somehow taking this observation or directly from the state variables and giving it to a neural network that outputs a high level action. And this is the hierarchical aspect. So the neural network outputs a high level action and that high level action is then feed to a symbolic planner, which is a low level A star uh, algorithm that just finds a shortest path from, for example, when we go to the sink, it will find the shortest path from where the agent is to the sink. And then that low level, that, that path will then dictate which low level actions for the agent to take, such as turn left, turn right, move up, move down. Now, we also want these agents to communicate with each other. So we actually do that exact same framework, but we do it for both agents at the same time. And then the output of the agents is fed to the transition dynamics, and those dynamics tell us how the state updates. Because remember, the state is dependent on both agents' behavior. And so we also add this communication protocol where the two agents can send messages to each other. Now, one of our main proposals in this work is that we want the agents to have a sense of identity and a sense of memory. As we're prompting the agents every single time step, we want to be able to have the agents remember what they were talking about before, because these are language models, they don't have any explicit memory. So what we propose is to add this thing called effective memory, which is effectively a memory buffer, and I'll explain this full pipeline, memory buffer that tells the agents what the last actions that it did was. And with the effective memory, we actually add feedback, which is where we give the agents ideas of whether they did something right or wrong based on previous actions. So first we take the observation, we convert it to language, i.e. we say something like, there is a cutting board at 2.8, there is a pot at 0.6, there you are standing at 1.4, uh, for example, the other agent is standing at 1.2. And you can use this and the, the LLM can have a visual, visual landscape of what the world actually looks like. Then that language is converted and fed into a language model, which outputs a language response, which is something like, I choose, and then you, in the, in the language out output, you give it options. You say, would you like to go to the sink, go to the, go to the cutting board, go to the delivery window. And those things are then used to parse out the actions. And once you parse out the action, you go to the, 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 the action is outputted and sent to the memory buffer and also used to update the environment. So. This is just one of the agents, but if you look at the full system with both agents, this is what it looks like. It's kind of complicated, but we'll go through it one step at a time. So we start with the observation. We convert the observation into language. That same observation is fed to the agent, both agents. And obviously we replace the position where you are and what you're holding because they're holding different things. Then the agents both output a language response, which is then used to parse out their action. So what is their high level action that they're trying to take? From these actions, there also is an optional message to the other agent, which is then fed into the next time that we're, we're prompting both the agents. So for example, in the agent's observation, we'll say, this is what the world looks like, and also the other agent sent you this message, and then I'll output the message. And you can see here with the parse out the actions, 
um, both of the memory buffers are updated separately and then fed to the agents the next time around too. So now onto some experimental results. First, we varied the, varied the length of the memory. So we wanted to figure out what would happen if the memory that was actually used was long or short. So in blue, we see here is no memory condition. So this is with no memory at all. The agents just know what they're doing right now. They have no idea what they've been doing before. And we can see they deliver on average to 0.25 plates, so pretty bad performance. When you add normal memory, so normal working memory, we can see that the mean delivery shoots up to around one dish per game, which is, which is much better and adding a longer memory, which is actually an infinite length memory, not just the last five actions, you actually get even better performance there. So we also wanted to test effective memory. So whether memory plus feedback is a good, a good combination. So feedback is the idea that if an, act, if an agent tries to take an action that is invalid, instead of updating their memory saying you did the action, we actually update saying you attempted to do the action, but failed because it was invalid. And so you can see here, that the the agents when with no memory at all get about 1.3 this is with llama 3 70 billion get about 1.7 dishes on average with no feedback at all so just memory just we saw before we actually improve the performance much more to about 3.5 and then we see with feedback and memory we get an even better performance of around four dishes per game which is actually human level performance now you can notice in the past two experiments we looked at gpt 4.0 and we looked at llama 3. So what is the actual effect of using different language models? So here we can see we compared four different language models. So Llama 70B with a 16-bit quantization, Llama 70B with a 4-bit quantization, GPT-4 Mini, and GPT-4.0. So in terms of cost, GPT-4.0 is the most expensive, and Llama 70B is something that you can run locally. These two are both the cheaper versions of the respective model. We can see that GPT-4.0 and Llama 70B 16-bit are actually very competitive with each other, despite the fact that Llama 70B is significantly easier to run locally. GPT-4.0 requires expensive API token calls to OpenAI. We can see that the cheaper versions as well both perform suboptimally. So we recommend using Llama 70B 16-bit uh, quantization in the future. So just as an example, here is a video of the two different agents playing the game together. So you can see on the right, there's a chat window. And you can see on the left, this is the game that's actually being played. You can see the two agents talking to each other and uh, working together to deliver some dishes. We can see if we skip forward, we can see that they actually begin delivering the dishes. So the agents are clicking together and uh, so successfully delivering. They've delivered two dishes already successfully, and they end up delivering a lot of dishes throughout the game. Three of them in order, one of them out of order. So we have three main key findings from this work. Number one, memory significantly improves agent performance when you're doing LLM agents. Number two, feedback mechanisms prevent hallucinations and help improve the performance. And finally, effective prompting strategies maximize the capabilities of language models and allow us to effectively get the most out of cheaper models, just like Llama 70B. And our future work here is we want to explore cognitive science-based prompting approaches, such as theory of mind, to make sure that agents are able to reason about other agents' beliefs and representations so that in the future they can align better to those agents and they can communicate only when necessary. And we also would like to integrate LLM agents into more complex environments, such as ones with more agents or ones with more different things to accomplish. So I'd just like to uh, acknowledge help from my colleagues and also uh, the grants that funded us. Thank you very much.